What's going on, James? There's not one person at MI6 who isn't talking about it. Talking about what, exactly? That what you did in Mexico was one step too far. That you're finished. What do you think? I think you're just getting started. I'm watching this film, it seems like there's a number of things that are, are very faithful to the James Bond franchise, but also that sort of shift things to make them a little more contemporary. We discussed, obviously, for a long, long time. I mean, and, and, and once the scriptwriters came in, we sort of started putting together the story. But we wanted to celebrate what Bond is about. And, and look, we get plenty of suggestions. I mean, there's lots of people with ideas saying, oh, we'd like this, we'd like this, we'd like this. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it, it's always been an ambition of mine, and I know Sam as well, since Skyfall, is to, that we wanted to find a, way into the, find a way into putting them in the film. But they don't work unless they're part of the plot. And that's the simple, simple answer. So it's, 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 a, it's quite a difficult job. I think Sam's done an incredible job of, of, of bringing, in, um, bringing in some of the, the old flavor. And hopefully, for new, new audiences, it's a, it's a discovery uh, um, more than anything else. How crazy do some of those suggestions get at times? Well, you know, I mean, it's just, but it's the same thing. You know, it's the same, it's always been. I mean, I, what, look, when I did Casino Royale, people were like going, where are the gadgets? It's like, and I was like, well, we need to figure it out. We'll, we'll get there. I mean, I, and honestly, I always wanted to. There was never any, I wasn't sort of saying no gadgets. I was just saying, let's find a way of getting them back into the, into the films. You know, they've been parodied so well uh, in other films um, that you kind of needed to sort of freshen them up a bit. It seems like even before you took over the franchise, uh, Die Another Day had gotten to a point where it was a little more ripe with postmodern, a little bit parody. I mean, there's an invisible car, which is certainly not something we would have seen mm. uh, during your turn. Mm. Well, I don't know. I mean, if it works, it works. Uh, I, I don't think you should discount anything. I don't think. You should, I mean, that, there's, no, there's no point in giving yourself ridiculous restrictions when making films. You've got to kind of be as imaginative as you possibly can. Do you find yourself going back to the Ian Fleming novels at all? I've read them so many times, but we do. We, we, did, we did in this, and we also used the Kingsley Amos uh, uh, novel as well as a reference. But you can't help it. You kinda, you're looking, always looking for sources, yeah. Is, is there anything you can point to in the four films that is something that maybe came from those novels specifically? No. That, Not off the top of my head, no. I mean, you, you've got to understand that, you know, that, that this is a two-year process, and at least a two-year process. And Sam and I have been working on this for two years, and the writers have as well. And, we, you, you know, many, many, many ideas go in and get thrown out and brought back in again, and you're reassessing all the time. And in fact, all, th all the way through shooting this, we were still, Sam and I were working incredibly hard just going, is this good enough? So we, whatever, whatever, whatever inspires us. What's a dream project for you? You mean apart from this? Yeah. Um, I'm doing one next year. I'm doing Othello in, in, in New York with David Alawayo and Sam Gold, the director. So that's a, that's a pretty dreamy project.